Guys, so we've done uh, videos in the past of me actually building things, but I never really explained anything how I was building it. Okay, every owl that I build or every animal, yard art, whatever I build is always going to be different every single time. Okay, because I don't ever keep the same. I don't. I don't have a mass production of anything that I build. Um, I don't have the mass production of any. Uh, any uh, parts that I use also. So what you see is, I gotta keep it off the side. Um, I use what I can do, but the only thing that I use mass produce with is my toes, my wings, and my eyebrows for the owls. I hope you can understand that. Uh, this time I'm gonna do something a tad bit different, and I do use these for the outer rings of the eyes, and I have been using these for the inner of the eyes here lately because I have a bunch of them. Uh, but I'm gonna try something different with the wings. These are old, um, and I'll explain pretty much what everything is here in a minute. These are old fan blades off of a clutch fan of a vehicle of some sort. Don't ask me what it is because I do not know what it came off of, I just know it's a clutch fan. Okay, these right here came out of a transmission. These are the clutches, part of the clutches of a transmission. Not 100% sure, but I think they're, they're just rollers, but I'm not 100% sure what they came off of. And what do you use those for? Those are the inner of the eyes. So, and then here's the toes, the claws. These are pieces of brake that I cut off three of. Can you see them? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> and then, these are the handle part, which would have been like, Oh, where the handle goes up onto the wood piece. This would have been, it would have went in here like a little bit longer, and then the rake would have been out here on the very end. It'd been kind of like this in one sense, but whatever. Okay, then I just, for the nose, there is a sickle guard. I believe it's what they're called. I try to use as many of them as I can because they got kind of the shape of a beak. I know a lot of other people that build owls, they uh, they use just anything. There's occasion time that I do use anything, but when I have these, I use these. For the body, I use a common shovel spade. Can't get any more common than the common spade. Well, except for my wife. She's kind of pretty common. Anyway. I'm gonna kind of put this together without welding, kind of show y'all what it's gonna similar look like. Then I'm probably gonna stop the video, weld it all together, and show y'all. And I really don't have any kind of my ear itches. I'm sorry, guys. Um, I don't have any kind of rhyme or reason how I do it. I just put it together. I'm watching as I'm doing it. If I like it. I put it there. How I start most generally is I weld, I will weld these two deals together like that and it'll be solid. And then I set them together up here. Okay, then it, it'll be set up there for a while and it'll just set by itself. And I usually weld the wings together. I don't know if that's gonna, uh, well, I weld them onto the deal. This is not gonna really look right, but. Where did my little other nose? Then while them are still on there, I'll weld the nose on there. Then I take these. These are usually the eyebrows. I start, you, sometimes I weld them together. Sometimes I don't. Depending on how the owl is and what they look like. And I'll set them right there and I'll try to put them up there. Where Can you see that very well? Okay. And then these will go inside here. You're good. Keep going. Oh, okay. Keep going. <laughs> And I'll put them in there like this. And then the toes, which this one will have a stand, which I'll, I'm gonna go get real quick. You wanna walk with me? Sure. Keep my shot. <laughs> this is gonna be the stand of this one. That'll be the stand of this one. Yeah, I believe it was a piece of an old uh, windmill, top part of it. 
So as you guys can imagine, just sitting like this. And a couple claws like this. And that one's pretty much how that one's gonna look. Like I said, every single one of them is always different. I never build two the same. They might have some of the same stuff. I'm gonna go cut this deal off real quick. <laughs> pieces together. My wife wants to stay there and watch me, that's fine. with it I clear coat it I go buy rust-oleum most generally rust-oleum sometimes it is a cheaper brand um, depending on you got usually sometimes you find store brand so it's a little bit cheaper but I like using rust-oleum because it already has the primer in it uh, to bond to the rust uh, even if it is clear it, it'll even say on this can in fact let me go find that can real quick and I'll show you come on in here honey walk with me walk with me It'll say over ultra cold right here or ultra ultra cover paint plus primer. The clear I'm I know the clear has it so it makes it helps it bond to the to the uh, the item that you're working the with. The item I'm working with. But you've got to clear it. If you don't, it looks like crap. I think. I just, I don't really have no rhyme or reason how I do it. I just, I just clear coat over it. And I'm done. That is a finished product, Al. Um, depending on where I'm at, they go from anywhere from $25 to $45. Uh, kind of also depends on how much work I put in them too. Some of them are a little fancier and I have had some that go to $50 to $60. They're usually on like on a water pump or something a little bit extravagant, a little bit more extravagant. I think that's how I said that word. Um, but if they're common like this, if I have them in the store, they're 35, 40 bucks, depending on what I want to price it for that day. Um, if you come to my house, they're 25 bucks. Thank you guys for watching. God bless. <laughs>